Okay, so with regard to secant and cosecant, and by the way, I think I forgot, so this is we're talking secant and cosecant. What we're going to do is similar to what we did with the other four functions, is we're going to look at manipulating them. And again, the big four is we're going to multiply the secant or the cosecant by something, right? We're going to add the cosecant and secant by something. We're going to multiply my inputs by something, or we're going to add or subtract my inputs from something. And the idea of A, C, and D, again, are not going to be really... Um, we don't give them any real names like amplitude and equilibrium shifts and all that because these are not wave functions, right? All that terminology goes, a phase shift and whatnot goes with the wave function. But we do know that the A causes a vertical stretch or compression. So those, so that basically means that these U shapes that we have, right? If uh, we're, what we're going to do is either we're going to kind of take this, uh, it'll, again, I think it's in regard to the sine graph. When we multiply it by A, it makes that sine graph larger or compressed. And that basically is going to take these high and low points, right? They're going to expand them out or make them compressed, all right? So that whatever happens to the sine graph tells us a lot about what happens to the cosecant graph. Same thing with secant. So, we'll, so there's really not an amplitude change unless we're talking sines and cosines. But we do get a vertical stretch of compression with the A. The C, again, what that's going to cause us to do is shift up and down. So we already have a problem with x-intercepts on a normal graph, but if I shift this up high enough or shift it down low enough, we actually are going to create some x-intercepts by creating a shift up or down. So that's probably what's going to uh, cause to happen as we move up and down because normally they don't have any, but if we shift high and low enough, we'll get there. Uh, B, again, causes a period change. We're back to a normal period of 2 pi, so one full rotation. And the new period is basically whatever B is divided into 2 pi. And so uh, we're going to do the same thing with all our x values, right? Divide them by B. Here we're going to multiply them by A, and here we're going to multiply by C, all the y values. And then D causes a shift left to right, right? Um, so um, we're just going to basically add or subtract this to all our x values with regard to that, just like we did. Okay, and then as I shared with you, as we did these graphs, let me borrow that secant graph again. We ended up using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We used nine sets of data, and they don't already have very nice numbers to memorize, like with the uh, the nice quadrantal angles. So that's a lot to remember if you want to push around a secant graph. And amazingly, as I shared with you guys, it turns out that if we can sketch the graph of a sine b of x minus d plus c, or a cosine of b times x minus d plus c, if we can graph these guys like we did in 4.1 and 4.2, then we use that re reciprocal idea where we cross the equilibrium, we have vertical asymptotes, where this has a high point, um, this has a low point, or where this has a low point, this has a high point, right? If we just use that to our advantage, then we're basically reviewing what we did in 4.1 and 4.2. And that's the way that I'm going to choose to sketch that, to A, practice the sine and cosine, because this wave action, when it comes down to it in terms of application, these waves are probably more important than secants and tangents and cotangents and all that. So I'm going to utilize this to, and we'll analyze all the transformations where A actually means amplitude, right? C actually means equilibrium shift. B means we have a period change, and D means we have a phase shift. So all our old language for A, B, C, and D are in play with sines and cosines. And then once I have the sine and cosine graph, we're just basically a manipulation away to get the corresponding secant and cosecant graph. Of course, you guys need to see me do that in action, right? And uh, so that's how we're going to get these basic shapes of, of secant and, of co and cosecant to get those to shift up, down, left, right, vertically uh, stretch and compress, horizontally stretch and compress, or horizontally move left or right. Okay, so we'll do that, obviously, in some videos coming up real soon. See you guys then.